Ongoing investigative series bailout has documented a number of cases involving suspects with long rap sheets and a high risk of skipping court hearings who have been the beneficiaries of greatly reduced bails. And what's more, those lower bails were paid for by others who've never even met the suspects. All of that came about by a prison reform movement whose stated goal was to help poor nonviolent suspects. Investigative reporter Mike Perlstein found cases where the poor remain in custody while watching some riskier defendants walk free. Well, that's exactly right, Tom and Natalie. We found suspects with little or no criminal background who were left struggling on their own while a top assistant to the mayor was helping to get some career criminals out of jail. Our investigative series, Bailout, has revealed that about 200 felony suspects have been bailed out of jail thanks to a private pool of money called the Freedom Fund, paid by a group of reform-minded activists. Among those helped by the fund were seven alleged drug dealers whose arrests were touted by Mayor LaToya Cantrell as part of the NOPD's uh -huh. undercover drug operation, Summer Heat. Among them, Louis Sincor, a career criminal with 18 convictions, 10 of them felonies. Another, Dameron Carmen, bailed out not once, but twice by the fund, despite 11 convictions, including five felonies. The judge has made this assessment that this individual is not a risk to public safety and can return to their community while, they, while their case works through the system. Rape suspect Lance Lewis had his $5,000 bail personally paid by Freedom Fund founder Joshua Cox, who remains with the fund despite being a top assistant to Mayor Cantrell. The mayor declined our request for an interview, but her criminal justice coordinator voiced the administration's push for bail reform. And I think people have recognized that setting bail is actually keeping poor people in jail. James Brundy, father of Summer Heat drug suspect Rashad out. Brundy, He's has a very you know. different opinion. So I figure what they're doing, they're going after the poor. You know, that's the only thing I could think of, why they're doing it. Brundy says that you rather than being helped by the reforms, he was hurt by them. That's because Rashad's bail was restricted to cash only, a designation being used in hundreds of new cases at Tulane and Broad, despite questions about whether it's even legal. This whole practice of cash only bail is not only, I believe, poor policy, it's contrary to the to Louisiana law. Despite this state Supreme Court ruling, the cash only designation is a reform coupled with lower bail amounts, eliminating the possibility of using a bail bond company, which charges $174 for all bail amounts, $1,000 or less. Brundy said he tried to pay that amount, but was told he had to come up with Rashad's full $350 bail. You know, that's a lot. Because, you know, as you know, he, he on disability. He only gets to check once a month. And then I'm the only one working in my house. I put a strain on me and my wife. Cash bail is refundable, while surety bonds are not. But getting Rashad released was urgent because he is dependent on dialysis. I had to do what I had to do to get him out. Yeah. No, no hesitation. For his health. For his Possibly health. Possibly his life. His life. Exactly. Uh, Kenyatta Johnson ran into the same problem when she tried to pay a bail bond company to free her son. They should at least give the option of a surety bond or a cash bond or whatever, but just strictly cash is it, ridiculous. Zeray Johnson's bail was set at $300 after he was booked with possession with intent to distribute marijuana. How difficult was it for you to come up with $300 on the spot to get your son out of jail? I mean, for in my case, it was my bail money. Nobody from the Freedom Fund came to help Brundy or Johnson, but they were there for Daquan Ayers. His bail was set at $3,500 after he was booked with distribution of marijuana. Johnson has no criminal history. Brundy has only a single eight-year-old misdemeanor, but Ayers has four violent felony convictions, including two for battery on police in Jefferson Parish. On top of that, he has open cases in Jefferson for simple battery and battery on an officer. But I think what was most important is to sort of look at the broader picture and across sort of all the individuals that were bonding out, regardless of their charge, the judge has determined, based on the risk assessment, which looks at criminal history, um, that that individual can safely return to the community. Days after Medbury paid his bail, Ayers failed to make his next court appearance. He didn't surface until October 10th, when he was again arrested in the French Quarter, this time for simple robbery and second-degree battery involving a tourist. Is there some systematic approach on who to fund? I think we share the concern that, that someone might get through the 
process and go out and, and, uh, and create another victim. I mean, uh, I will say that our belief is that we are creating fewer victims long term. Freedom Fund organizers say they get referrals on who to bail out from the public defender's office. But neither organization can point to any set of criteria on who they select. So it is very disturbing. It has been, I think, the best way to say it's been very secretive, a very secretive procedure. Uh, and uh, again, I am extremely appreciative of the fact that you are looking into this. So, Mike, you've highlighted some troubling cases in which the Freedom Fund stepped in to help. How do the organizers justify what they're doing? Now, the organizers say that 92% of the people that they bail out do show up without any missed court dates or reoffenses. But that percentage comes from the fund itself, so we're checking and double checking that, as well as looking at new cases. So, we do plan to keep a close eye on this rather remarkable reform that's sweeping criminal court. Interesting stuff. Mike, thank you so much.